All right, Silla Nation, week one is officially in the books. Now we are entering week two of the NFL season. Thus, we are here to give our predictions for week two. Yes, man, we got a special guest joining us for another week of the weekly predictions. Joining us for another year, shout out to Son of Steel. Feel free to hit the subscribe button on his channel. It's in the at in the title. Shout out to Son of Steel. How you doing, brother? Not too bad, man. I'm feeling really good about this uh, victory against the Falcons. We're the leading AFC North uh, right now. Uh, Baltimore got beat, Bengals got beat, Browns got beat, feeling pretty good coming into uh, the next few weeks of our uh, schedule. So, Yeah, it feels good to be a, a Steelers fan right now, being that we're the only AFC North team to have a win so far. Hopefully, if we can keep racking up wins like these, uh, if we can rack up weeks like this, you know, we can uh, we can start building some confidence, start building a, a good, strong foundation heading into midseason. So, with week two, I mean, we'll get into the Steelers and Broncos game shortly, but first we got to start off with Thursday Night Football. We got to go in here, a divisional matchup. We got Buffalo Bills at the Miami Dolphins, two teams that had comeback victories last week. What's your prediction here? All right, so I'm uh, picking between these two. Uh, these two teams are actually pretty good. However, let's talk about the fact that Buffalo no longer has Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis. Um, they're very thin on wide receivers, although they did draft uh, Keon Coleman, if I'm correct on that one. Do think uh, I'm going to go with an upset here. I'm going to take Miami to beat Buffalo just because I think their offense is a little bit high octane with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and uh, H&B back from injury. Uh, yeah, give me the Dolphins with this upset. Yeah, I honestly have to agree. I'm going to go Miami here. It's because the Bills, they had a hell of a hard-fought comeback against uh, Arizona. Josh Allen literally put his team on his back. Two rushing touchdowns, two touchdowns through the air, one to Shakir, one to Matt Collins. Those are two guys that are really going to have to step up. And, yes, they did draft Keon Coleman in the second round. In fact, they traded back twice in – from the first round to still get this guy. And he had himself a big game last week, his first game. He's going to have to step up again against a, uh, a Miami defense that's obviously led by Jalen Ramsey and company. So tough matchup for Buffalo. Josh Allen had a good game last week. In my opinion, this is going to be one of those games where those Josh Allen mistakes start to creep up again. And thus, I got to go Miami. Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waller both had phenomenal games. Tua had a great game through the air, man. And I think this is a game that finally – that they're able to get something in the ground because last week Miami didn't see much of that. So perhaps they can finally get something going with uh, a chain and 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 Mostert. So we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Miami. I got to agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I get, you know, your your thoughts on that one. Uh, Miami, you know, they had a good come from behind game against Jacksonville, you know, despite the controversy that happened with Tyreek Hill and whatnot. Hill still came in and had a performance that you would expect from Tyreek Hill. Buffalo coming from a big come uh, come from behind victory against Arizona. Real good by Josh Allen. Didn't make too many mistakes. You know, he did exactly what Josh Allen needed to do to get Buffalo their first win. But on the road against a division rival in Miami, uh, I believe I read somewhere not too long ago about Buffalo and Miami. When Tua's facing Buffalo, he's not exactly playing very good. It's not exactly his best moments when he's out there on the field. So, that may play a factor into Miami's play or to his play and how Miami could play in this game against Buffalo. It's just, I think against Buffalo, for some reason, Tua just isn't up to par to what he really could be. So, and I think Josh Allen is going to want to try to continue the momentum that he's riding on after that come from behind victory against Arizona. I want to take it into Thursday night on a short week, but against a division rival and Josh Allen against division rivals. I mean, he usually steps up big time. He usually goes and balls out. So I'll say this. Yeah, Tua is six touchdowns, seven interceptions career-wise versus Buffalo. Yeah. So his performance there isn't exactly the best, and I could see it happening again, especially on prime time. But I'm going to go with Buffalo to get the win here. Okay. Okay. So okay. good alone wolf there. Moving on, we have the New Orleans Saints who blew out, the, the, the I think, the Panthers last week, and they faced Dallas who thankfully blew out the Browns, man. Two teams will blow out victories. So how's this going to fare this week, man? Yeah, this is a very interesting matchup here. Um, yeah, especially what you said about the uh, two blowouts and stuff. Uh, they both look good. They did sign C.D. Lamb uh, to a long-term deal. They got that done. 
And, uh, of course, uh, I'm probably going to take Dallas here. I just think they're the much better team now than they were. Uh, New Orleans, yeah, they have their moments. They have their good games. Um, I just think they're going to lose this game. Uh, give me Dallas here. Yeah, I agree. I got to go Dallas specifically because um, the Saints don't impress me. Derek Carr doesn't impress me. And I could say the same thing about Dallas blowing out the Browns. It's the Browns. But the Browns are better than the Panthers, and the Saints blew out probably the worst team in the entire league in the Panthers. So it's a great yeah, no team winning. Yeah, it gives them a, a great team win, some confidence heading into Dallas on the road. But I still think Dallas is going to win this one in some pretty convincing fashion. Give me Dallas. Yeah, I would have to agree on this one with Dallas getting the win. I don't want to take anything away from Derek Carr and what the Saints did against the Panthers. It's a division rival, and they were, I believe they were at home at Caesars Superdome or whatever, and uh, they got a dominating victory. But, yeah, the Panthers are just hot garbage. They're just not a good football team. I know it's week one, but that's not a good first impression by Carolina. And, and Dallas, you know, they, they were the supposed underdogs against Cleveland, and I was like, why or how? He's just money I ever made. It, absolutely. I think anybody, you know, putting money on that. It's just the Browns, you know, they got a great defense. You know, when Nick Chubb's back, their rushing offense is going to be superb, uh, of course. But Deshaun Watson is just not a good quarterback for them, obviously. But he never was. He never was no. for the Browns. I mean, I mean, when they traded away Baker Mayfield, this whole thing with them has completely bite them in the ass, especially sending Baker Mayfield away over Deshaun Watson, who just looks so bad. Dude, and did you did you hear he just got sued again? Ah, oh, shit. No, yeah, it's like, it literally broke like 20 minutes ago. He's getting sued for another allegation. Uh, for something that happened in October of 2020. Yeah, it's time. Well, to... the dude needs to stay away from the massage parlor, for God's this sake. This dude needs to stay away from society at this point. I mean, the guy <laughs> is, a, is just a, a mess. The Browns got to rip the Band-Aid off like ASAP. There's no yeah, point in dragging no kidding. it. But, I mean, Dallas had a good performance against Cleveland, solid defense, and, again, not taking anything away from the Saints, but it's the Panthers we're talking here. Give me Dallas to get a win here on their first home game of the season in uh, Arlington right here. Just I, I just think Dallas has a good performance here. Yeah, I agree. I think they win in decent fashion. Uh, I'm going to jump ahead here since we're on the Cleveland discussion. Cleveland at Jacksonville. What's your prediction here, man? All right. So, uh, well... Cleveland against Jacksonville. Um, I got to say with uh, these two teams, uh, Jacksonville just looks so, I don't know, subpar per se. I mean, I had Travis Etienne as my running back, and he just didn't do that much. And, of course, I'm probably going to lose my week one uh, fantasy this week, so that's kind of unfortunate. Cleveland, yeah, they're hot garbage as well and stuff. Um, especially what you just said about Deshaun Watson just being so bad and just the offense just looks so bad. Although the defense on the Browns is good. Um, you know what? I was going to go with Cleveland. Uh, I'm going to do an upset here. Give me Jacksonville here. I think they might ba bounce back with this game against Cleveland. Although, uh, they got to do better against Miles Garrett and co. So. Yeah, I mean, th this one was actually tough for me to call. And the reason I say that is because I actually think Cleveland has a decent chance to win this one. Uh, the, the, the Jags, they, they played decent versus the, the Dolphins. They were up 14 nothing, I believe, and, of course, they, they blew it. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, Cleveland here. So I think they, they have to rebound. They have no choice. Maybe maybe they uh, get their left tackle back. I know they had offensive line injuries that really hurt them. Clearly, they allowed... How many sacks last week to Dallas? Six, I think. Six, yeah. That's that's a in, insane number. So perhaps they get their old line back a little healthier. They can rely on Jerome Ford. And seeing how Jacksonville's defense is just Swiss cheese, perhaps Deshaun Watson can have himself a rebound game, getting the ball to Judy, getting the ball to Cooper, and whatever targets, right? So I'll be nice. For <laughs> one week, I'll be nice. Give me Cleveland. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much the, the, the extent we'll go there with Cleveland. That's, but, that's very generous. Uh, ja I, Jack I would say, uh, just to uh, ask you this, if Deshaun Watson doesn't work out for Cleveland, would you see someone like Jameis Winston step up? Oh, yes. I, th I think Stefanski would absolutely make that decision. In fact, I give it till I give it to week seven. If Watson has weeks and weeks and weeks of these performances, 
I'll give it to week seven until Winston is the starter. And I don't care how much they're paying him. $230 million fully guaranteed. That That's going to be a, a huge pill to swallow for Cleveland. But, I mean, in that, order to find success, I mean, you got to make the right decision. Yeah. Although it may be a difficult one, you have to do it. Right. But I mean, you got to do what's best for the team and actually get some wins. So, I mean, Jameis Winston is probably your best choice. Yeah, and that's not really saying much because we all know the quarterback Jameis Winston is. He's not afraid to sling it, but he obviously it comes with, you know, interception concerns and mistakes. But honestly, what's the difference? At least, at least, at least, Winston's a little uh, more he, fearless. He, he can sling it. He's not afraid to sling it, and yeah. he's got no. He's not. He's got wins in his last name, so the Browns want to rely on something. There you go. But uh, as far as this game, Jacksonville, they, they just don't impress me. They, they really don't whatsoever. I mean, they they had that lead last week. They blew it. Lawrence just has not really taken that next step forward whatsoever in in his career. He just doesn't really look that overly great to me despite the tar- targets he has with Kirk and Brian Thomas who had a touchdown last week and Evan Ingram who sees targets like it's nothing but I don't know what it is but that that Jacksonville offense despite the talent that's on there and ETN at running back they're just not progressing they're not putting points on the board I, I don't know what it is I don't know if it's Lawrence in his play I don't know if it's Doug Peterson and him controlling it I don't know but their defense ain't helping them as much either uh Cleveland situation is obviously not any much better, but I just don't see Jacksonville really being impressive. And I, if I if I had to be real, I think Cleveland actually gets a win here. I think they get a, a rebound win here. I think they rely heavily on the defense and running the ball successfully if they can. If they do that, I think Cleveland gets a win. Yeah, I see this definitely being low scoring. If you're a betting person like me, I'm taking the under here. Next up, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Detroit Lions. This should be a damn good one. What's your prediction here? I like this matchup here. I mean, Tampa Bay and Detroit, both good teams. Obviously, they both made it into the playoffs last year. Very shocking that they actually made it into the playoffs. Um, I mean, you had Baker Mayfield, who got that long-term deal, that uh, well-deserved contract extension. Uh, Detroit, I mean, you have a really good offense. However, they kind of staggered a little bit against the Rams, but... I feel like this is going to be a very close game. I think Lions is going to rebound. I think this could even go into overtime. Uh, Give me the favorite. Uh, Give me the Detroit Lions here. Yeah, I got to go with Detroit. And it's nothing against the the Bucs. They had a great game last week versus Washington. Baker had four touchdowns. I mean, him and Evans are just cooking. Uh, Rasheed White's looking good there as well. Chris Godwin's still reliable. And what I noticed is... is the Rams, they they really took Detroit to the limit until overtime where it seemed like Detroit said enough of this and just ended it in their first drive of overtime. Mm-hmm. But I think I think Tampa's definitely going to keep it close. They're going to keep it uh, very, very within reach. But I think Detroit's still the better team. They're still going to be within good enough. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule out a Tampa Bay upset, but I got to go with Detroit just because I think they're the better team. I think they're the more hungry, and I think they make the less mistakes. So, yeah, give me Detroit in what should be a very interesting matchup and one I'm definitely going to be watching. Yeah, for sure. I mean, both these teams had very good matchups week one. Baker Mayfield really shined against the Commanders. Detroit, I mean, they got a big win in prime time, a home opener at Ford Field. I think I'm going to go with Detroit on this one, not to take anything away from Tampa Bay. Baker's really getting that chemistry going with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Jalen McMillan, their third-round rookie. You know, Rasheed White is a very good, reliable running back when it comes to receiving and running the football. It's their defense that is going to be the weak link in this matchup, I th- I feel, because Antoine Winfield just got injured, and he's expected to miss some time. That may include this game, and I think they're also dealing with other injuries around the front seven, and that's something that's really going to slow them down and hurt them big time. You know, Levante David left the game with an injury. Yeah, and I think uh, Cansey, their defensive lineman, is uh, also injured, so and we all know Detroit's rushing attack with Montgomery and Gibbs. I mean, it's it's pretty deadly and dominant. So I, I think Detroit gets a win here. Though I could see Tampa Bay sticking in this one offensively. I think Detroit gets it. Yeah, I mean, there could be even be a uh, come from behind victory by the Buccaneers. I mean, that is a very strong possibility as well. Sure, I, I agree. I definitely want to roll out Tampa Bay upset, but yeah, I think we all agree we're gonna go with Detroit. Uh, next game, we got the Indianapolis Colts versus the Green Bay Packers. Michael Fleur has already confirmed that Will 
not Will Levis. Malik, Malik Willis. Willis will start. What's the difference? Malik Willis will start <laughs> for Green Bay because, of course, Jordan Love ended the game, the second to last play with a knee injury, which is unfortunate because, God, man, it seemed like they were going places with, with Love, but with, with 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 Malik Willis, I don't know, man. They just trade for him. He don't know the playbook well, and frankly, he's not ready for this type of position. What's your prediction here? Usually, I would actually go with Green Bay, uh, but yes, unfortunately, what happened to Jordan Love when he got injured just five seconds uh, before the end of the game uh, is probably devastating for the Green Bay Packers. I mean, Malik Willis, I mean, he was supposed to be a quarterback that was supposed to be drafted probably earlier uh, during that year. And I thought the Steelers were going to get him other than Kenny Pickett. However, I mean, it just goes to show you that entire quarterback class just plain sucks. But um, I usually would say, yes, Green Bay. But Indianapolis looked really good against the Texans. This was literally a shootout with them. Anthony Richardson looked great. Jonathan Taylor looked great. Pittman looked great. Defense looked great. Uh, give me Indianapolis here. So just because you don't have Jordan Love, and just like you said, Love hurts. <laughs> it definitely does, unfortunately. Um, yeah, if 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 Love was playing, I definitely would give the favorite to to Green Bay, but obviously not without a, a close battle with the Colts because it's very similar to uh, what they did last week versus the Texans. Man, a rivalry matchup within uh, one score game. And I honestly say, man, the Colts were very close to beating them. Because there was this one pass that Anthony Richardson attempted deep for A.D. Mitchell that was a little oversailed, but I believe it was a penalty on the defensive back that slowed his route down. And that could have been a breadbasket pass that could have led to a Colts upset in week one. So for this game, I think the Colts are still going to show a lot of promise. I think Anthony Richardson is going to show off his arm strength and his deep ball ability. I think Richardson uh, and, 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 and Taylor get going on the ground here. Yeah, give me, give me the Colts in a confident victory. Yeah, I mean, Matt LaFleur already stated that if Love is not cleared for the game, then yes, Malik Willis will start. And I don't think they're going to rush Jordan Love back so early. It's only week two. You want to make sure that your franchise quarterback is fully healthy to to keep him for the later part of the season where it matters the most, absolutely. Um, so I fully expect me, Malik Willis to be the quarterback here. And Green Bay is a very, very strong team and a very challenging and competitive team when love is in there. I don't know if I feel the same way if Malik Willis is in, in there. Malik Willis no, just No, I don't. I don't feel confident with Willis at all. Although they did sign Josh Jacobs which would give them like an edge with the running game. I mean, it's basically an even match. Um I mean, he's better than Aaron Jones who's now with the Vikings. That's yeah, true. And, and you look at what uh, Joe Mixon did versus the Colts. Yeah, they could really want to rely on Jacobs. And I think that's what they're going to do going forward till Love comes back is they're going to have to reestablish and change up their 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 scheme and their plan, their game plan on offense into running the football effectively if they want to remain competitive and stick in these games. But as far as this one goes, you know, Malik Willis as a passer, he's just very inconsistent. He's just not reliable whatsoever there's a reason why Tennessee moved on from him and decided to keep Mason Rudolph at the back up to Levis so and the Colts were very cha uh, a very challenging team against Houston very competitive you know they were just two points shy of of beating them I would say and uh the, the Colts you know Richardson looked very good in his return from his injury so I think that remains the case I think he continues to show growth any Anthony Richardson that is and I think the Colts get the uh the the win here on the road yeah I think we all agree on that but if Green Bay wants yep. to stand a chance it's it's to be methodical win time of possession use Jacobs use Wilson and keep uh keep Anthony Richardson off that field but I don't know if they're going to succeed so yeah I think we all agree with the Colts here next game we got the New York Jets at the Tennessee Titans now, keep in mind, this is being made right before the Monday Night Football game between the Jets and the Niners tonight. But I don't think we have to watch tonight's game to get an idea who's going to win this game. What's your prediction here? Oh, God. This is a tough uh, matchup to clear. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, I feel like, you know, the Jets' defense is good. However, I mean... Tennessee is a little bit subpar as well. I mean, they did kind of did good, but they kind of faltered at the end. Um, I think if 
if I am a Ben man, uh, I got to go with a very familiar team. I'm going with the Jets here. So Tennessee, um, I don't know much about their offense now. Like it just it, it, it's, it's hard to def- predict this, but I, I'm just going to go with the Jets here. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really pay attention to the Titans uh, in the Bears game, but what I did see is that Will Levis sucks and he <laughs> threw two interceptions. And he doesn't chase after the defender who intercepted him, by the way. No, I mean, they could no. <laughs> now, now, I know, I know, like, because uh, I think that was a very winnable game by the Titans because Caleb Williams and them couldn't get anything going. They got nothing done offensively for, for Chicago. So I thought Tennessee was very within reach, and maybe they didn't give the ball enough to Pollard or it was just Will Levis making mistakes in the air. But I think that's going to remain the same here. Um, yeah, give me the Jets. I think the Jets are going to win. They're going to rely on Brees Hall. And I think A-Rod, bearing he stays healthy after tonight, he's going to have himself a decent game. Yeah, absolutely. I don't I don't really see Tennessee being that challenging at, at the moment. You know, they're going to have some growing pains with the new additions they have and a first-year head coach, of course. Um, Will Levis, if he wants to stand a chance of, of being the, the starter still and – Keep a Tennessee, you know, competitive. He's going to have to work on his game and work on his mistakes. But against a Jets defense that's still legit and very good and just know how to turn over the ball, then Levis is going to have himself a, a difficult day even in Tennessee. Give me the Jets here with the win. Yeah, agreed. Next game, we got the San Francisco 49ers at the Minnesota Vikings. Sam Darnold-led Minnesota Vikings. What's your prediction here, man? Yeah, so, yeah, with Minnesota, they do have Sam Darnold. I mean, do you really uh, believe in this guy? I am still not convinced. I mean, this guy has had inconsistencies throughout his career. However, he had a couple good games. Um, they did. The Vikings did draft J.J. McCarthy. Unfortunately, uh, he is out for the season. I just... Here's my opinion. I just don't think J.J. McCarthy is even that good of a quarterback. I think he's in for a long haul. Um, it, it, it's just not going to look good. However, you do have Justin Jefferson as your wide receiver for the Vikings. San Francisco, they're going to be good no matter what. I mean, they got the high-octane offense. They did get Ayuk back. They have McCaffrey, although he is dealing with some injury right now. Um, defensively on the 49ers, they're still good. Uh, yeah, give me the favorites here. Give me San Francisco. Yeah, I agree. Gotta go San Francisco. I think they went in pretty convincing fashion. I know Minnesota had themselves a field day versus the Giants, but it's the Giants. Giants has always suck. And yeah, did you see all these like people actually booing uh Daniel Jones while he was like entering the stadium? Oh yeah. Dude. It's that bad. And it then, is that bad. They it, just need they need to just cut him loose and start over, get a new quarterback. I mean, this is just embarrassing for the New York Giants. They only had one good season under uh, Dable, and it was just a one-hit wonder. And now you got Barkley, who's basically gone, and who they have as their running back, Devin Singletary. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That was the that, that was honestly the worst thing that happened to the Giants because that gave them hope that Daniel Jones was the guy. Well, in reality, he wasn't, and now— It's like the Brown situation again. It is. It is. Right. But, yeah, because Minnesota defeated them, they might have a little uh, fire underneath them. But against San Francisco, it's San Francisco. We're talking about one of the best teams in the league. San Francisco wins in decent fashion. Yeah, just like the Saints against Carolina, I'm not taking anything away from what Minnesota did against the Giants, but it's the Giants we're talking about. You know, Donald didn't look half bad, but he is going up against a 49ers defense that is legit, still got a lot of great players on that team, and... Sam Darnold, you know, he is facing his former team because he was the backup to Jimmy G at the time when Jimmy G was the quarterback in San Fran. So he's got some familiarity with the the system, I'm sure. But I still don't think that's going to help Minnesota whatsoever. It's not going to be enough. No, no. And Sam Darnold, I mean, he, he, he'll he have a moment here and there, but it won't be consistent. So San Francisco, they're the favorites. It's not hard to see why, you know, they got plenty of playmakers. And I think we're going to see just that. Give me San Fran. I'll give I'll give Minnesota this. Depending what happens tonight and if San Francisco can slow down Brees Hall and them, perhaps Minnesota can rely on Aaron Jones. Maybe. I'll give them that. But that's before seeing tonight's game, obviously. Next game, we got the most boring game of the week. We got Seattle at New England. This is, uh, according to this, this is some of the lowest odds all week. What's your prediction here? Yeah, I just think this is probably going to be a boring game as well. Um, New England obviously are not the same 
team anymore. Bill uh, Belichick is gone. And now it's Gerard Mayo running the entire team. Uh, I mean, this is just a group of young, inexperienced rookies, young players and stuff. I mean, they did draft uh, Drake May as their quarterback, but Jacoby Brissett is returning to the Patriots to be the starter. Uh, although Seattle, I mean, yeah, you do have... Some good players. Uh, you got a decent defense here and there. Um, yeah, give me Seattle. I think Seattle's probably got a better chance out there to beat New England. However, New England did beat the Bengals in an orderly fashion. But this is a Bengals team that is still having a lot of problems within their own organization, coaching-wise and pl player-wise. Yeah, I mean, I thank the Patriots for that. I, I think we all do. So shout out to the yeah, Patriots for absolutely. that. absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you made me a uh, – you actually made me appreciate you for once. So there you go. But in this game, <laughs> in this game, I mean, they could still rely on Stevenson. Stevenson had himself a hell of a game. He had one of the better rushing games of all of week one. So they're going to want to continue to rely on that versus Seattle. But I think Seattle's front seven is kind of underrated. If they're able to slow him down and force the game into Brissett's hands, you got to love their chances against that stout secondary. Seattle, it's just offensively, they need to find an actual rhythm. They got Walker. They're going to get him going. We know he's a stud of a back. Uh, Gino just needs to be a little more consistent. He needs to be able to hit his targets properly. Once they get things going consistently through the air, I think Seattle can actually start putting up some points decently. But as of now, I don't see it, and maybe that's what benefits New England in a potential upset here. But... As long as Brissett's the quarterback, I mean, I just, I just can't find myself ever picking the, the Patriots. So give me, give me Seattle. I see, I see where your, your mindset is right there. Uh, I see this game being very competitive defensively at that by both teams. Seattle against Denver last week. Their, their offense, especially, they started off very slow. I would say very sloppy until toward the tail end, where they were really running the ball down Denver's throat and being you know a little bit more competent and a little bit more consistent toward the tail end and getting the victory against Denver New England pulled off the upset quote-unquote against Cincinnati very defensive game there their defense made a lot of plays made a lot of turnovers really saved them uh, a couple times in that game against Cincinnati it's just I don't know like I can kind of see this game being defensively like I said but I could also see sloppy performances from both offenses as this they're trying to find rhythms and whatnot there. But honestly, I think I'm going to go with the upset here. I'm going to go with the home team in New England. Wow. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. You got a... Yeah, honestly, if it was like five or six years ago, I would be do, uh, going with New England. I mean, especially when you have Tom Brady still in New England. That's fair. Um, but you know what? Hey. It's it's still early into the season, so upsets are always still going to happen. So I I want to put absolutely I want to put a pass in. If it's very defensive, New England can definitely keep it within reach. Yes. Yeah. Next game, we just talked about him. The New York Giants at the Washington Commanders. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's your prediction here, man? Do the Giants finally score a touchdown? No. No. Uh yeah. So yeah, Giants are still gonna suck no matter what. And uh Commanders, they got a new coaching system under uh Dan Quinn and they got uh Jaden Daniels in there. Um I think Washington looked really decent. Um yeah, I'm just gonna go with the home team here. I'm gonna go with the commanders, aka the Washington Redskins. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the Giants just suck. The, no one's no one's ever betting on the. And if you are, I I, I gotta ask you to just give it to me because I mean, <laughs> you're wasting money anyway. Uh, yeah, give me Washington. Jaden Daniels looked decent in his first game. Yeah, their defense really was rough, but thankfully they're going up against an offense that doesn't have anything of an offense. So Washington will definitely have a rebound game here and a rivalry matchup in a division game. Jaden Daniels didn't make many mistakes last week, so I think that remains. I think they use his legs still. Give me Washington. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Giants, I'll say this, they got some some solid names and solid players on that defense, but that's pretty much it as far as offense goes. Outside of Malik Nabbers, who I'm sure will be a, a stud wide receiver for them, as long as he doesn't have a quarterback or the Giants don't have a quarterback in general, the Giants are just not going to be competitive. See, I feel like if they just paid, like they paid Daniel Jones, what, $40 million or so? So if they would have just paid that money to Saquon Barkley and... 
Xavier McKinney, who both made plays in the opening game yeah. on, on Friday. Like, they, they could have just... I think they still would be a solid team. I think they'd still be solid teams. But they decided to give all that money to Daniel Jones for one single year, and that has handicapped them to a, a bad situation for, for years now. Yeah. yeah and that's yeah. the that's the Giants doing. That's what they had to suffer with. And uh, thoughts and prayers go down to the Giants fans. Seriously, like I feel for you. But the the Commanders, you know, you know, they were beaten badly by Tampa Bay, especially defensively. But um, I think they get a bounce back victory here against the Giants. It's not really saying much, but it is a division rival. I think Washington will take anything at this point. And I do think J- Jaden Daniels does have a bounce back game and start to impress and showcase his talent because I think he's a stud. So give me a Washington here. Yeah, go on. I just think I just think he's a better quarterback this year than all the other quarterbacks. So and especially now that they have Austin Eckler and Brian Robinson together in the running back position. I mean, they're gonna make plays. So and especially Luke McCaffrey, who they actually added. Oh yeah, they they actually got a decent little offense there, I would say. Like they they got some uh they got some tools for Daniels. So I think they they're starting to Finally, uh, kind of get him grooving. They're trying to get him eased in, and then uh, I'd say in a couple weeks or so, we can finally start to see that potential kind of burst onto the scene yeah. for Washington. I think this is kind of the game where it starts to show, so good for them. Next game, we got the Los Angeles Chargers at the Carolina Panthers. Could this be another blowout? Could the Chargers get their second straight victory? Well, I just think they can, um, although the Chargers do not have... Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, well, Mike, uh, <laughs> I said Mike Evans, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, uh, they basically cleaned house on offense, and they did, in fact, get got Joel Ault as their tackle. I think that was a good idea. However, I just feel like they could have went wide receiver. They did get McConkey, who actually did pretty good in the last game and stuff, so... And, of course, you got Jim Harbaugh, who is now returning as head coach in the NFL uh, for the first time in almost a decade, pretty much a decade. Um, Carolina, yeah, they they still suck. Just like with the Giants, they're they're like the bad news Panthers here. So, <laughs> um, yeah, man. Uh, was all that said and done? Uh, even though with the well inexperienced lack of veteran receivers for the Chargers, give me LA. Yeah, you know, probably a year, maybe not a year or so, because Carolina was really bad last year. But, you know, in future years, I probably would have uh, said that, or in previous years, I probably would have gone with Carolina for the upset because the Chargers are always going to choke. The Chargers are always going to charge her. But with Jim Harbaugh, I think uh, they're going a different direction. They're going a more positive uh, path. And, yeah, I think this is one of those games where potentially McConkey can Really burst onto the scene. He had himself a good first game, a touchdown in there. But yeah, give me give me the Chargers for sure. I just I just don't find anything positive about the about the Panthers right now. Yeah, Harbaugh got a win in his debut as Chargers head coach. A, a very solid win. I would say that the offense was very balanced. But especially the the rushing offense with J.K. Dobbins coming back from a serious injury and just showcasing himself in his talents that if he can stay healthy, he can be a, a top back, a dominant back in the league. And Going up against Carolina's defense that just lost Derrick Brown, arguably their best player for the season. Yeah, that that that's going to hurt Carolina's chances for sure. I mean, their chances going into this game were very slim overall, but I mean, Carolina just this year, it's, it's going to be a long season, I feel, for them. So Chargers, they look good against the Raiders. I think they uh, I think they get a second win straight. They go 2-0 against Carolina. I think Chargers get the win. Yeah, give me JK to go for another big game here. Um, next game, we got uh, we got the Las Vegas Raiders at the Baltimore Ravens. Could could Vegas pull off the upset? It's hard to say, but the thing is, though, they are facing a Ravens team that have a really good offense, and on the defense, they got a pretty solid defense, and they did uh, draft a guy by the name of Nate Wiggins who looked really good in preseason, although they did lose Patrick Queen. Uh, and we ended up getting him. That was phenomenal. Um, so with, with Las Vegas, I, I don't know who the quarterback is going to be. It's just like, do you trust Minshew? Do you trust O'Connell? I don't know. It's just like, you. I, I just don't think I can trust either those quarterbacks to get the job done for the Las Vegas Raiders. 
And I just feel like this is a team who's probably going to end up doing bad, probably get the number one pick. Whoever's going to be the quarterback in 2025, that's probably who they're going to select in the draft in Green Bay. Um, with Baltimore, um, yeah, uh, give me Baltimore. Give me the favorites. Yeah, unfortunately, I got to go Baltimore as well. Um, coming coming off a loss like that. By inches. <laughs> literally a quarter inch. I mean, <laughs> there's no way they lose two in a row. There's, there's no way they lose two in a row, and especially not in their home opener. Give me Baltimore. They're going to win in convincing fashion. Their defense is still pretty solid. I think they have a bounce-back game, being that they're not going up against anything too crazy like a Mahomes in them. So, However, I will say, if, if Minshew wants to be on his A game, he wants to pull off that Minshew upset, that, that mustache, mania, Maybe Adams, maybe uh, Tucker can go off and have some, have themselves some big gains. Uh, maybe I'm trying to. That's wishful thinking, bro. Exactly. But I mean, listen. I mean, Baltimore in the regular season, there's no doubt. As long as Lamar Jackson, you know, plays like he usually does and he stays healthy, you know, Baltimore's going to be a good team in the regular season. Um, coming off a a devastating loss against Kansas City, I don't see them losing two in a row, especially to a Raiders team. Uh, that just did not look impressive against the Chargers. Though Antonio Pierce, you know, he's trying to change the culture and everything with um, with the Raiders of what he's trying to do. It's just they don't have many playmakers, and it's definitely going to be growing pains for the Raiders for some time. It's going to take a bit, but as far as this game goes, I don't really see Minshew really doing a whole hell of a lot, and I just think Baltimore just... I, they could win in dominant fashion. They could not. The Raiders could take them to the limit. They could show some competitiveness. I just don't see the Raiders getting the victory here. I think Baltimore in the end gets a win. Yeah, I mean, all I, all I see yeah. with the all I see with the Raiders is they have Adams and Bowers. That's it. They don't have any other targets. No, no. I just think that I just think the Ravens are going to bury them. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean their line, their spread says uh, nine, negative nine and a half. I mean, if you think they're going by more than that, feel free to put some money on it. I actually might, honestly. I mean, I hate the, I hate the bet for the the Ravens' success, but I mean, well, I'll say this: the Chargers won by twelve, so Baltimore could do the same, if not more. Definitely. Oh, for sure, for sure. Next game, we got the Los Angeles Rams at the Arizona Cardinals in the NFC West matchup. This could be close, man. This could be very good as long as the Cardinals want to keep it within reach. What's your prediction? Yeah, this is going to be very close, um, especially with the uh, Cardinals. They finally got back Kyler Murray, and I think a lot of Cardinal fans have got to be very happy about that. And they finally get a wide receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. They've been looking for a wide receiver since Larry Fitzgerald actually left for Arizona and retired. DeAndre Hopkins, yeah, it worked out for them for a short while, but it just didn't work out overall. Um, the Rams, they kind of looked very competitive against the Lions, though. And, uh, I would have to say, um, man, uh, yeah, give me, give me the Cardinals here. I, I, I like what they're doing. Yeah. Um, see, this one's tough for me because I kind of want to go Arizona because they, they, they definitely choked, but I still think they could have won against Buffalo. Marvin Harrison Jr. was wide open and Kyler, no surprise. Anyone couldn't see over his line and couldn't see him, but... <laughs> With that being said, I'm still going to go the Rams because uh, I still like their chances. I think Cup is still going to have himself a good game. He's going to have to step up now because breaking news, Puka Nakua is now on IR for at least four weeks with a, P a PCL injury. That's unfortunate. That's a devastating devastating injury. That's a that's a hard loss. That is incredibly unfortunate, um, but I still think they got playmakers to make up for it. They got Kyron Williams, who's a good back. They got Blake Corn, who I think could see more time. Coop Cup, Cup's obviously a, a dog in himself. They have Demarcus Robinson, who made a couple plays last week. Yeah, give me the Rams. Yeah, I mean, this game really could go either way. Arizona for the first half against Buffalo was impressive till they collapsed in the second. But the Rams, even when the Nakua went down just before halftime, they still remained competitive. They still took the lines to the limit, I would say. I mean, they went into overtime with the team. And uh, they only had one primary receiver, and that was Cup. So... That's going to be the case for at least the first or the next four games, I would say. But, you know, they still got playmakers. They still got guys that can step up. And Sean McVay, as the head coach, you know, he's always going to find a, a guy that can step up and make a play uh, with Stafford in at quarterback. So not to take anything away from Arizona and the playmakers they got, but, you know, there's still a team up in the rise. You know, they could remain competitive. 
I just don't really see Arizona getting a lot of wins as of right now. They could surprise me, but as far as week two against the Rams, I don't think Arizona pulls off the, the victory here. I'm going to go with Los Angeles here. And perhaps Arizona pulls off the quote-unquote upset, but uh, I got to see just a little more from them to, to, to actually say that. But, yeah, give me the Rams. Now, next game. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos did not look good at all last week. Bo Nix had himself a rough welcome to the NFL. The Steelers are coming off with a 1-0 lead. So how do you feel about this one, man? I think I feel pretty good about this game, although I feel like Russell Wilson may not actually play in this game. I think they are going to stick with Justin Fields uh, to be their starter. Although, I mean, we kind of were expecting Russell Wilson to return to Denver and actually see Russell Wilson absolutely beat the Broncos and just show that the Broncos were wrong for what they did to him. Um, yes, um, Denver just looked not great. Although I did like Bo Nix actually getting drafted by the Broncos. He did look good in preseason, but hey, uh, preseason does not matter at this point. I mean, it's it's just practice, but yeah, um, I think Pittsburgh is going to go 2-0 and in this game unless something happens that Denver somehow pulls out a miracle. So give me Pittsburgh. Yeah, I agree. In fact, this is my lock of the week. And there's not many games I go into Steelers games where I think to myself, hey, I feel confident about a win because it's always the Steelers and they always say any given Sunday, right? But this is a game I feel very confident about because they do have a rookie quarterback. And Bo Nix, he does not throw the ball. He does not throw the ball down the field. I'll give you a quick stat for you, man. Last week, he threw the ball four times. That was past 10 plus yards in air yardage. Two of them were completions. The other two were interceptions. Yeah. Wow, that's bad. He does not throw the ball down the field. He is, he, I'll be real with you, bro. He is Kenny Pickett 2.0. He is afraid <laughs> to throw the fucking football. So, in that regard, I feel very confident in, in the defense to make plays again. And seeing, seeing what the Broncos allowed to Kenneth Walker, yeah, we better get Najee and we definitely better get Warren involved this week. Give me the Steelers in, in, in my lock of the week. That should be the game plan, absolutely. Run the football effectively. Just run the ball down their throat. Najee, Warren, even Patterson, if you want to get him involved with his chemistry with Arthur Smith. The entire offense, you know, the passing offense, I mean, uh, I don't know if Fields is going to be playing in this game. I think it really depends on Russell Wilson's calf injury and how much that has healed. Again, if Russ is no good to go, then you start Fields. But if Russ is good to go, then you play Russ. And I'm sure Russ is going to want to go out there and ball and play in Denver considering, you know, how they treated him toward the tail end of his Denver career. Sure. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder, but that's yet to be determined with practice and whatnot. Overall in this game, I see this being very heavily defensive for sure, you know, but... I mean, Denver just doesn't really impress me. Their offense was just very lackluster. Even their rushing offense wasn't able to get much going. They don't really have a true number one back. I don't know what happened to Javante Williams coming out of North Carolina. I felt he was explosive and dynamic, but after that, I think he suffered an ACL injury early in his career, and he just not has bounced back from it whatsoever. No. And it's devastating no, to see. No, he has not. Yeah. So... I think the Steelers' defense comes up big again. Maybe we see some more progression from the offense, a little bit more consistency, more tight end usage, and running the football effectively, whether it's Fields in there or Russ in there at quarterback. Hopefully they can do well and not turn over the football because that would be great. Regardless, still run the ball. Of course. That's the game plan. That's that's what you got to do in this one. But give me Pittsburgh on this one. I think Pittsburgh gets a dub. In fact, I'll give you I'll give you guys a score prediction. 23-14. to 14. And, yes, we do score a touchdown. Okay. I can't tell you who, but I just want one. I just want one. We all it's just want probably, one. It's probably going to be Pickens, right? I mean, that seems like a close game, though. I say the uh, score will be a lot higher, but I think Pittsburgh will probably get into the late 20s or even early 30s. Oh, good. We can only hope and dream, bro. I would love to see that, man. Yeah, I would love to see that, too. If if Justin Fields or Russell Wilson can actually uh, get the game going for that offense, and I feel like if they can just stick it with uh, Justin Fields, it did work out for them. He did do above average. I think we can actually uh, win this game at right. a much higher level than just field goals. And, uh, hey, kudos to Boz for actually getting us those field goals. I mean, hell, this was a domed stadium. It was easy for him to get those field goals. Six for six plus a punt. Boz is the GOAT. 
I already know what my next jersey is going to be. I'm not. I'm not even joking. The true killer B is Boz. The final killer. The B. The last killer B exactly. of the Steelers. Exactly, man. Thank God for Boz. Hopefully, hopefully he's not as busy this week. But I think I think we all agree. Steelers still walk away from the Mile House City with a dub, man. Next game, we got a good one, and I hate that this one is at the same time as our game. We got Cincinnati at Kansas City. Kansas City with two straight home games to start the season. Cincy has always had slow starts, so do they pick it up, or could we see a massacre here? Uh, yeah, this is going to be a slaughter for the uh, Bengals. That They're going to get absolutely obliterated by a high-octane Chiefs offense. Although I did have Patrick Mahomes and Isaiah Pacheco against the Ravens. They didn't score me enough points uh, to help me win this week. But, um, yeah, I think they can definitely – I think this could even be a shutout uh, for – this game and yeah i mean chiefs are always going to be the super bowl favorites they ended up getting xavier worthy i mean this was so stupid how the bills just basically traded away probably the fastest wide receiver in the combine and probably in the entire draft and xavier worthy is already making plays for the chiefs so yeah, that's my lock of the week right here. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game. Yeah, I agree. I got to go Kansas City. I know Cincinnati's always had slow starts like I mentioned, but I don't know if it's because Chase and the contract talks, they're limiting him. T. Higgins was out last week. He could be back this week. Lord knows my fancy needs it. But it's not going to be enough to beat Kansas City. Kansas City is always going to be Kansas City. If Burrow and them can get something going, maybe he can get the, his running backs involved, Chase Brown and... And uh, what's his name? Zach Moss, I think, is their starter. Zach so. Moss, he was with the Colts at last year. Right. That's right. So perhaps they can get them involved and try to keep Mahomes and them off the field. But it's Arrowhead, dude. Give me Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, like, I'll say this. When fully healthy and fully established, Cincinnati can take Kansas City to the limit. They've shown it time and time again. They've beaten them in the AFC Championship game. And Arrowhead, when fully healthy and fully prepared, and prepped, but they're far from that. They, yeah, they, they are not the same, despite you know the familiar names in town that they got. This chase contract situation, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know when or if they reach a deal. T. Higgins and his injuries that that's that's really a, a huge pain for for the offense for them and whatnot. But Joe, Joe Burrow, I mean, when he doesn't have a number one, it's hard for him to really do anything as as well as their scheme and their the way they run plays. Is they just feel limited. They just feel really limited, even when Chase and Higgins are in there. And against Kansas City's defense, you're not going to get through them doing just that. And their defense, you know, they've they, they they got some youngsters in there, but they're no nowhere near superstars, in my honest opinion. At least not yet. It's still some growing pains for that defense to really gel and form to be in what they really want to be. But against Kansas City, that's a tough challenge with the way Mahomes plays and the offensive weapons he's got and how he spreads the ball and just the way they run the ball, too. Everything they do on offense is just deadly. It's just dominant. It's just, it's just hard to bet against Kansas City. But get, give me Kansas City to uh, get the win here. And Arrowhead, I honestly think that they cover the spread. I think they win 26-20. to 20. I think Cincinnati could at least try to pull off a comeback, an attempted comeback, but I think Kansas City just closes it. Yeah, honestly, I can see a big game for Pacheco here. Definitely. They're going to rely on him. and I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe Worthy and them have a good game. And hopefully that, that, that helps you in fantasy, man. Yeah, I hope so. So I need this win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, the entire AFC North does, man. The more the Bengals lose, the better for us. Oh, yep. yeah. Next game, we got what could be an interesting one. We got the Chicago Bears at the Houston Texans on Sunday Night Football. What's your prediction on this one, bro? I got to give credit to, like, Chicago, especially, uh, you know, bringing in guys they – did bring in Keenan Allen. They did draft Romo Duns. Uh, who else? Damn. Uh, yeah, DeAndre Swift. They surrounded Caleb Williams with uh, weapons. We're still they're tr they're still trying to figure out where they're at uh, within this team. Uh, Houston. I gotta say, I think they look so much probably the more formidable team now that they have Stephon Diggs. Now that they have Joe Mixon. It, it also just gives uh, C.J. Stroud just more weapons. And I think this could even be a playoff, even maybe perhaps. Uh, you may call me crazy. This could be a Super Bowl caliber team. I don't know if they will even uh, 
I don't know, uh, catch up to the Chiefs, but it would be very close, though. But, um, yeah, give me the Texans here. I think they're going to win this. Yeah, I actually agree. I think the Texans are in the right path. They showed tons of – they had a Detroit Lions-like season, but I think they could be on the level of, of potentially being better, man. They, they're they still so young that they could they, – they literally have elite potential. In this game, yeah, I, I think they beat Chicago. I'll give Chicago this. The way that they have to attack is the same way Anthony Richardson attacked the Texans secondary. You got to hit them deep. Texans struggled with that, especially with the uh, with, uh, – up, uh, who was it, Alec Pierce last week? Like, they really struggled in, in, in trying to slow down Anthony Richardson's arm. So if Caleb Williams wants to wants to pull off some of his moves and pull off his arm, you know, get some shots to Adunze, get some shots to Allen, and maybe even DJ Moore, right? I think that's the way they can attack it. Maybe they can get uh, DeAndre Swift involved, but I don't think it's going to be enough to beat Houston. Houston just seems ready to go. Houston seems fired up. Houston seems like a team that's ready to put their name on the map. And I think Mixon has himself another great game. I think Mixon goes off. I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the lead guys in, into the, the Texans' victory. So give me, give me Houston on Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, I got Houston on this one just as much. Uh, Mixon had himself a great debut as a, as a Texan last week against the Colts. Stroud continues to impress. The whole Texans team just continues to impress. You know, what D'Amico Ryans is doing uh, as a head coach, you know, he's just – bringing that team up to uh, Providence, you know, really growing that team very well with the talent and the draft picks that he he used last year and this year just as much. You know, Stephon Diggs had two touchdowns in his debut. Nico Collins continues to have 100 yards almost every week. Um, Tank Dell, you know, he's a very handy weapon, you know, now that he's back healthy and that defense is, I think it's only going to get better week by week. Them going up against a, a rookie quarterback in Caleb Williams, uh, Caleb's going to have to have a big game here on primetime early in his NFL career, his Chicago Bear career. He's really going to have to showcase his talents, his generational playing ability, as some people would probably say. But He, he has to throw the ball, dude. He averaged 3.2 yards uh, a completion. It was not uh, a very impressive performance, I would say, statistically by Caleb Williams. He's He's got to throw the ball. He's got the targets for sure. You know, He's surrounded by uh, a boatload of talent. Around the wide receiver room, even a running back with DeAndre Swift, he's a handy running back as much. Like offensively, the Bears have to get something going. They have to get a groove going. If they don't, then the Texans are going to get a win here, and I think they do in general. Give me Houston. Yeah, definitely. Moving on to Monday Night Football, the final game of Week 2 to close out Week 2, guys. We have the Atlanta Falcons who lost to the Steelers at the Philadelphia Eagles. What's your prediction here, man? Yeah, I think the... uh... Falcons are still just still going to be bad. Um, I just feel like the Eagles are still going to be that favorite team. I mean, yeah, just uh, I'm just going to go with the Eagles here. I have nothing else to say about this game. I agree, man. Less said the better because Kirk Cousins in prime time. We already know less said the better. Barkley had three touchdowns last week. I think they're going to run a similar game plan because the Steelers were running I want to say all over Atlanta, but they were running very effectively to the point they were winning time possession. They were milking the clock. They getting were keeping fir- getting first downs at that. They were keeping the defense off the field. So I think that's a similar game plan here. Yeah, give me give me Philly. I think they went in decent fashion. Yeah, Kirk Cousins, his first game in Atlanta wasn't impressive whatsoever. Had two picks, arguably should have had three, and was sacked a couple times. Could have had a couple of strip sacks at that. It's just not a good start by Kirk Cousins. The Kirk Cousins era in Atlanta. Now that he's going into prime time, and we know how Kirk is when the lights are on him, just not a good player, just not a good performance by Kirk Cousins. I think that continues. If Atlanta has a shot, it's their defense. That's what's going to have to keep him in this game. Initially, that could be the case with Philly's offense starting off slow, but I think as the game progresses, I think Hurts is going to start cooking. Barkley's going to start cooking. A.J. Brown's going to do what A.J. Brown usually does. After what Pickens did against A.J. Terrell, I think A.J. Brown does just as good, if not better. So give me Philly here. Honestly, Philly's my lock of the week. There you go. So Philly with the W. Right. I mean, maybe we're underestimating the Falcons here, but if they can get Bijan going, if they can get Drake London down deep, maybe they got a shot. But I think in general, Philly's going to walk away at Lincoln Financial Field with a dub. But let's know you guys' thoughts down below. Let's know you guys' week two picks down below. Huge shout out to Sonny Steel for joining us for another year, another week of the week of predictions. Always great to have you on. Always great to split opinions and split uh, picks with, with you. Anything you guys say before we get on out here, man? 
Hey, man, go Steelers. Let's go get number seven. I agree. Let's go 2-0, and and uh, here we go. This is the end of the day, man. Let's ride. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Peace! Peace!